Hello my friends. Welcome back to the You Can Do TV channel. We're at Hyundai Pipes factory in Insangju City, South Korea, where is at the forefront of large diameter HDPE pipe manufacturing. The manufacturing process begins with extrusion, where molten HDPE material is forced through a die to form the desired pipe shape. The advanced machinery is capable of handling diameters up to 2,700 mm. Once extruded, the pipes undergo a cooling process, where they are submerged in a water tank to rapidly cool down and solidify. This crucial step ensures uniformity and strength throughout the pipe structure. Next, the pipes are cut into specific lengths tailored to meet the client's demands, ensuring convenience and ease of installation on site. Quality is paramount at Hyundai Pipe, with rigorous inspections conducted to assess adherence to ISO standards. Every pipe undergoes meticulous scrutiny to guarantee impeccable quality and reliability, meeting the stringent requirements of diverse industries and applications. The installation process for pipe in this project employs compression fit technology, which has a history spanning over 30 years. The process begins with the delivery of equipment, tools, and materials to the job site, including pipe rollers, pulling equipment, compression fit die, fusion machine, and HDPE pipe. The HDPE pipe is fused to correspond to the installation distance, with this project requiring 1800 feet to be installed in one continuous pull. Butt fusion joining of the HDPE pipe involves heating and melting the mating surfaces with a hot plate heater, pressing them together, and holding them under pressure until they fuse into a permanent joint. Proper training of fusion technicians and extensive quality assurance ensure the success of each fusion joint. HDPE pipe offers numerous advantages, including corrosion resistance, a long-term design life of over 100 years, and the ability to handle surge events. Additionally, its fusion joints eliminate the risk of leaks. During installation, the HDPE pipe is pulled on pipe rollers until the entire length is fused. In urban environments, where laying out the entire length of pipe can be challenging, sections are fused separately to prevent blocking intersections. Inspection of the host pipe, cleaning, and testing ensure a clear bore path before installation. Bank shoring and excavation reduction methods minimize disruption during installation. The HDPE pipe is pulled through the host pipe under tension, maintaining its reduced state until fully installed. Fusion joints are made seamlessly, and pressure-tight connections are established back to the existing host pipe. The compression fit installation, spanning 1,800 feet, is completed in less than a day. The technology's efficiency, durability, and ability to meet various pressure requirements make it a preferred choice for water transmission and sewer force mains replacement projects across North America. The video showcases the pivotal third stage of well expansion utilizing horizontal directional drilling, HDD, for a water supply system. Employing a reamer with a diameter of 900 mm for the second expansion, the process illustrates the advanced capabilities of HDD in underground pipeline installation. HDD stands as a secure and efficient method for laying pipelines beneath surfaces without disruptive excavation minimizing environmental impact and infrastructure disturbance. By employing precision drilling techniques, HDD ensures the expansion is executed accurately and safely, meeting the stringent standards of modern infrastructure development. This method not only enhances efficiency in construction but also mitigates potential risks associated with traditional excavation methods. Through the lens of the video, viewers gain insight into the intricate process of final well expansion, underscoring the significance of HDD in contemporary infrastructure projects. The connection of an existing pipeline, measuring 400 mm in diameter, to a new pipeline with a diameter of 225 mm is a critical process in the field of pipeline engineering. This procedure, 
often referred to as hot tapping or saddle connection, requires precision, specialized equipment, and adherence to stringent safety protocols to ensure the integrity and efficiency of the pipelines involved. One common method for performing this connection is through the use of electrofusion branch saddles with large size outlets, coupled with drilling equipment. In the case of connecting a 400 mm pipeline to a 225 m pipeline, the electrofusion branch saddle serves as a crucial component. These saddles are specifically designed to provide a secure and leak-proof connection between two pipelines of different sizes. They are equipped with outlets that match the diameters of both the existing and new pipelines, ensuring a seamless transition of fluid flow. The process typically begins with meticulous planning and preparation. Engineers conduct a thorough assessment of the existing pipeline's condition and the surrounding environment to determine the most suitable location for the connection point. Factors such as accessibility, soil conditions, and proximity to other infrastructure are taken into account to minimize disruption and ensure safety. Once the connection point is identified, the hot tapping procedure can commence. This involves drilling a hole into the existing pipeline while it remains under pressure. Advanced drilling equipment, specifically designed for hot tapping applications, is used to create a precise opening in the pipeline without compromising its structural integrity. The drilling process must be carefully controlled to prevent any sudden pressure releases or damage to the pipeline. With the hole drilled, the next step is to install the electrofusion branch saddle. These saddles are made from high-density polyethylene, HDPE, or other durable materials capable of withstanding the pressure and temperature conditions of the pipeline. The saddle is positioned over the drilled hole, ensuring a snug fit and proper alignment with both the existing and new pipelines. Once the saddle is securely in place, the electrofusion process begins. This involves heating the saddle and the pipe surfaces to the appropriate temperature and then fusing them together using an electric current. This fusion creates a strong, leak-proof bond between the saddle and the pipelines, ensuring reliable fluid transmission between the two. One of the key advantages of electrofusion branch saddles is their versatility and ease of installation. Their design allows for quick and efficient connections without the need for extensive excavation or disruption to the surrounding area. This makes them particularly well suited for applications where space is limited or access is challenging. In the case of the 400 mm to 225 mm pipeline connection in Tychy, Poland, careful planning and execution would have been essential due to the project's location in a populated area. Strict adherence to safety regulations and environmental considerations would have been paramount to minimize risks and ensure the project's success. This section is about the process of joining high-density polyethylene HDPE, pipes and fittings using a butt fusion machine, particularly the hand push variant. Before fusion can occur, the pipe ends must be cut squarely and cleaned meticulously to remove any traces of dirt, debris, or contaminants that could compromise the integrity of the joint.
Once the pipes are prepared, the butt fusion machine is set up on a stable surface, ensuring it is level and securely positioned. This is essential to maintain the alignment of the heating element and the facer, which are central components of the fusion process. During the heating phase, the pipe ends are carefully positioned between the heating element and the clamps of the fusion machine. The heating element is then energized, radiating heat evenly across the ends of the pipes. The temperature and heating duration are controlled to ensure that the HDPE material reaches the necessary fusion temperature without overheating or causing damage. As the pipe ends reach the designated fusion temperature, they become malleable and ready for joining. At this critical juncture, the heating element are swiftly removed and the pipe ends pushed together firmly. This action creates a molten interface between the two ends, which is fundamental to achieving a robust and durable fusion. Following the joining phase, the molten material is allowed to cool and solidify, a process that is equally as crucial as the heating phase. The pipe ends remain held together under pressure, facilitating the formation of a strong bond between them. The initial step in the HDD process is the installation of a wash pipe, which serves as a conduit casing during subsequent drilling operations. A 406 mm diameter wash pipe, spanning a length of 200 meters, is carefully laid from the designated entry point, typically on Pulau Inda. This wash pipe not only provides structural support but also minimizes the buckling effect on the drill stem during later drilling phases. Following the installation of the wash pipe, the pilot hole drilling commences. This phase involves the use of specialized drilling equipment, including a drill pipe and bit, to create a preliminary hole along the designated path. Drilling fluid, typically a mixture of water and additives, is continuously pumped through the drill pipe to facilitate the drilling process and transport cuttings away from the borehole. The drilling operation is closely monitored to ensure accuracy and adherence to the predetermined path. Steerable drilling assemblies and advanced positioning systems are employed to maintain alignment and navigate through the subsurface formations. Throughout this process, meticulous attention is paid to environmental considerations, with measures in place to mitigate any potential impact on marine ecosystems. Once the pilot hole is drilled to the desired depth and alignment, the reaming phase begins. Reaming involves enlarging the pilot hole to accommodate the final diameter of the pipeline. This process is crucial for ensuring sufficient clearance and stability for the installation of the product pipe. Reaming is conducted in multiple stages, typically in increments, to gradually increase the diameter of the borehole. Specialized reaming tools, equipped with cutters and nozzles, are used to mechanically and hydraulically remove soil and debris from the tunnel. The reaming process is carefully monitored to ensure uniformity and integrity of the borehole, minimizing the risk of obstructions or uneven surfaces. Subsequently, in the pipe setup and pulling phase, the product pipe is prepared for installation. Prior to pulling, the pipes are welded by certified welders and internally sandblasted to remove any welding slag. All welded joints undergo non-destructive testing, NDT, to verify their integrity. Once welding and NDT are completed, hydrostatic tests are conducted to pressurize the product pipeline to the specified design parameters. Internal coating and shrink sleeve are applied to the welding joints as external protection. A camera is then utilized to inspect the inside of the coated pipe joints to ensure they are free from damage. The final step in product pipe preparation involves conducting a holiday test to ensure the entire pipeline is defect-free. 
The inspected and approved product pipeline is then placed onto pipe rollers at a predetermined profile. Due to space constraints, the product pipeline is prepared in two sections, which are jointed together as a golden joint. As the first section of the product pipeline is ready for pulling into the final 762mm borehole, a swivel is installed between the pole reamer and the product pipe to prevent rotation during the pulling process. The product pipeline is adjusted and lifted according to the punch-out gradient and permissible bending radius. Once the entire pipe pulling setup is ready, the pipe pulling process begins from the entry site and continues until the end of the product pipe reaches the surface. The Ministry of Energy, Green Technology and Water, Malaysia has confirmed that to date, the HDD crossing for the submarine water pipeline is the longest in the history of Malaysia. In the rugged environment of a rock quarry, the Hard Rock HDDP, Horizontal Directional Drilling and Punching, system emerges as a game-changer, offering a revolutionary approach to drilling through challenging terrain. Traditionally, Penetrating rocky substrates posed significant obstacles, often resulting in disruptions to surface infrastructure and landscaping. However, with the advent of Horizontal Directional Drilling HDD, these challenges are effectively mitigated. By harnessing the power of HDD technology, contractors can now navigate through even the toughest underground rock formations with precision and efficiency. The Hard Rock HDDP system incorporates innovative features designed to streamline the drilling process, such as the patented bull back system. This system, coupled with horizontal air hammers, revolutionizes the drilling process by enabling the creation of pilot holes and material pullback in a single seamless pass-through. What sets the Hard Rock HDDP system apart is its ability to maintain surface integrity while effectively drilling through challenging rock formations. Unlike traditional drilling methods, which often result in disruptive excavations and landscape alterations, the HDDP system ensures minimal surface disturbance, making it an ideal choice for projects where preservation of surface improvements and landscaping is paramount. In Tennessee, USA, trenchless pipeline installation has become a preferred method due to its efficiency and minimal disruption to the environment and infrastructure. This team has embraced this approach, leveraging cutting-edge equipment such as the Robin Small Boring Unit, SBUA, and Auger Boring Machine, ABM, for their projects. With a focus on precision and effectiveness, the team employs the Robbins SBUA for tasks that demand accuracy and reliability. This compact yet powerful unit is ideal for navigating challenging terrains and urban environments, making it perfect for Tennessee's diverse landscape. Whether it's crossing under roads, railways, or sensitive ecological areas, the SBUA ensures smooth and efficient pipeline installations. Additionally, the Auger Boring Machine, ABM, plays a crucial role in the operations. Capable of handling various bore sizes, the ABM excels in projects requiring larger diameter pipelines. Its versatility allows for customization according to project requirements, making it indispensable for tackling different challenges encountered in Tennessee's pipeline installations. The Guided Boring Method GBM, also referred to as pilot tube microtunneling, PTMT, is a sophisticated technique employed for line and grade critical crossings over considerable distances. This method finds extensive application in various construction projects where precise alignment and minimal ground disturbance are essential.
GBM operates in a two-pass approach. Firstly, a hollow stem pilot tube, equipped with a guidance system, is installed. Secondly, a steel casing follows, which is jacked in place by an auger boring machine while soil is conveyed back to the jacking shaft through the casing. In case of challenging soil conditions, the steel casing can alternatively be rammed in place using a pipe ramming tool. The process begins with the hydraulically powered guided boring machine advancing the pilot tubes while displacing surrounding soil. Continuous monitoring of line and grade is achieved through a theodolite optical guidance system. Operators meticulously steer the GBM to ensure horizontal and vertical alignment by observing the advancement on a monitoring screen and making necessary adjustments for accurate arrival at the receiving pit. The versatility of the GBM allows it to navigate through various soil types, including clay, sand, and small gravel, owing to the steering head attached to the lead pilot tube. This capability enables successful installations across a range of ground conditions. Steel casing pipes with diameters ranging from 5 8 OD to 60 inches OD are commonly used in GBM operations. Additionally, the method supports the direct installation of small diameter vitrified clay pipe, VCP, and no bell RCP, enhancing its adaptability to project requirements. GBM operations can cover drive lengths ranging from 25 LF up to 500 LF, depending on specified pipe materials and anticipated ground conditions. The method's flexibility allows it to be utilized either as a standalone system or in conjunction with auger boring and pipe ramming equipment, catering to diverse project needs. As each length of casing is welded together and auger bored or rammed in place, the pilot tubes are retrieved at the receiving pit. This efficient retrieval process ensures minimal disruption to the surrounding environment while maintaining the integrity of the installed infrastructure. The HDPE Double Wall Corrugated DWC, pipe extrusion line operates through a series of coordinated processes to produce high-quality pipes suitable for various applications. It begins with material feeding, where high-density polyethylene HDPE, resin pellets are fed into the extruder hopper. HDPE is chosen for its strength, flexibility, and resistance to chemical and environmental degradation. Inside the extruder, the resin pellets are melted through a screw conveyor within a heated barrel. The molten HDPE is then forced through a die, giving the pipe its desired shape and size. Once the molten HDPE exits the die, it is passed through a corrugator machine. This unique process forms alternating ridges and grooves along the length of the pipe, providing strength while maintaining flexibility. After corrugation, the newly formed pipe is rapidly cooled using a combination of air and water cooling methods. This solidifies the HDPE and ensures that the corrugated shape is retained. Once cooled, the continuous pipe is cut into individual lengths according to the desired specifications. 
These cut pipes are then stacked or coiled for further processing or packaging. In May 2019, Lager returned to Chino Marti, a pivotal moment marking the start of the Rhythm Pump Storage Plant project. This endeavor was spearheaded by a subsidiary of Albertech, which was tasked with installing a water purification plant at the retaining wall of Lake Rhythm. The significance of this plant lay not only in its function to purify water for the tunnel construction site but also in its innovative design and compactness, necessitated by the requirement for aerial transportation to the site. Initially celebrated as a triumph in nature conservation, the project soon encountered formidable challenges as tunnel construction delved deep into the mountain. The harsh conditions inherent in such an endeavor posed multifaceted complications, testing the limits of engineering and human endurance alike. At its core, the project aimed to expand the SPB's Retom Hydro Power Station, originally erected over a century ago, with the goal of quadrupling its output to enhance the power supply to the Godhard rail line. As part of this expansion, the pressure line to Lago Ritten, situated approximately 800 meters higher, needed to be entirely relocated underground to accommodate its significant enlargement. However, the initial stages of the project were met with setbacks as exploratory drilling revealed the complex geological makeup of the region. The rock strata proved to be riddled with challenges, including aquiferous formations and inherently unstable conditions, significantly complicating the tunnel construction process. To mitigate these challenges, the project team devised a strategy to construct a gallery into deeper rock regions, presumed to be more amenable to construction efforts. This involved the creation of a 3.2-meter diameter shaft, complete with an inflection in its root and two distinct slopes, to facilitate access to the desired depths. The construction of this shaft presented numerous obstacles, compounded by the extreme terrain and the need to navigate a slope of nearly 45 degrees. Despite these challenges, progress continued, driven by the expertise and determination of the project team. The culmination of this effort was the excavation of a 1,400-meter long sloped shaft, terminating in an arrival cavern known as the Slide Chamber, which served as the conduit to Lake Ritham. Work commenced on the construction of the lower pressure gallery, a painstaking process involving blasting, excavation, shotcrete lining, and steel arch reinforcement. Over 250 blasting stages were meticulously planned with more than 20,000 holes drilled to accommodate explosive charges. The harsh alpine environment, coupled with the relentless demands of the construction process, exacted a toll on both equipment and personnel, requiring unwavering commitment and resilience to overcome. Despite the challenges encountered, Progress was made, albeit with occasional setbacks such as high-pressure water ingress following a blast. To address this issue, innovative solutions were devised, including the utilization of hybrid injection processes involving cement and resin to seal aquiferous fissures and stabilize the tunnel.
By February 2021, significant milestones had been achieved, including the construction of the shaft base cabin and a launch ramp for the tunnel boring machine, TBM. The TBM, a marvel of modern engineering, was assembled in an 80-meter-long cavern to commence driving operations. The assembly process was intricate and labor-intensive, requiring meticulous attention to detail and precise coordination among the project team. Despite the complexity of the task, the team persevered, driven by a shared commitment to the project's success. Once the TBM is firmly ensconced within the rock, it begins its arduous task in earnest. Following several weeks of adapting to interim solutions within the cavern's confines, regular drilling operations finally commence. The machine's 23 roller cutters come to life, exerting immense pressure against the rock's surface, methodically breaking off chips with each rotation. The loosened material cascades into a material channel via the cutting wheel, aided by the introduction of water to facilitate its smooth descent down a sloped chute. The water essential for this process is meticulously sourced from the point of water ingress into the access gallery, repurposed from its previous role of cooling the TBM's internal components. Meanwhile, within the drill head itself, a multitude of intricate tasks unfolds. A diverse array of clarifications, ancillary tasks, and additional work occur concurrently, each contributing to the overall efficiency and efficacy of the drilling operation. These intricacies will be explored in greater detail later. However, a comprehensive understanding of the TBM's mechanics is crucial. During the drilling process, four powerful driving presses come into play, applying up to a staggering 500 tons of pressure. This force drives the cutting wheel against the unyielding rock surface, initiating the excavation process. The gripper shield, a critical component of the TBM's infrastructure, absorbs these forces, utilizing two driving grippers to firmly anchor itself in place. Each drilling stroke, spanning a distance of 1.2 meters, typically lasts approximately 30 minutes, during which the machine relentlessly chips away at the rock's surface. Within the confines of the driving shield, four hydraulic motors power the cutting wheel, their combined torque absorbed by vertically positioned compensating hydraulic systems. The coordination of these hydraulic systems, coupled with the controlled application of pressure from the driving presses, ensures the stability and alignment of the TBM during the drilling process. Post-drilling stroke, the machine temporarily halts its advance as the trailing hydraulics come into play, advancing the gripper shield to prepare for the next phase of drilling. Following the completion of each drilling stroke, the entire machine must be incrementally drawn forward to facilitate further progress. This complex operation involves the coordinated movement of seven trailing units, each equipped with the technical apparatus necessary to support the machine's ongoing operation. Additionally, at the behest of Marty, a meticulously designed fullback prevention device serves as an additional safety measure preventing the machine from sliding backward down the shaft in the event of a power failure or emergency situation.
In the event of a power loss, the fullback prevention device seamlessly transitions into action, utilizing emergency tanks containing highly compressed nitrogen to activate the self-inhibitory mechanism on the grippers. This ensures that the machine remains securely anchored, even in the face of unforeseen challenges. As the TBM advances through the rock, the careful coordination of its locomotion is paramount, with each movement meticulously executed to maximize efficiency and safety. Upon reaching maximum extension during drilling, the TBM's front gripper retracts, allowing the rear gripper to anchor itself in place, facilitating backward movement as the machine is propelled forward. This intricate dance continues as the gripper shield advances, followed by the forward movement of the rear machine components. This cyclical process ensures that the TBM progresses steadily through the rock, inching ever closer toward its ultimate destination. Transitioning to the slide chamber, constructed using the blasting method akin to the access tunnel, meticulous precautions are taken to minimize vibrations and ensure the structural integrity of nearby installations. Despite the formidable challenges posed by the harsh environment, the TBM's relentless march forward remains undeterred, driven by a relentless commitment to progress and precision. Supplying the entire construction site through a meticulously engineered 38-meter deep access shaft is no small feat. This feat of engineering forms the lifeline of the project, ensuring that all necessary materials, equipment, and personnel can access the site efficiently. The shaft, with its considerable depth, serves as the primary conduit for logistical operations, facilitating the movement of essential resources to the heart of the construction zone. The logistical challenge is further compounded by the need to manage the site's operations through a material cableway. Every aspect of construction, from heavy machinery to construction materials, must be carefully orchestrated to fit through the narrow confines of the access shaft. This requirement necessitates the oval shape and substantial diameter of the shaft, allowing for the smooth passage of equipment and materials. Within the construction site, a slight chamber provides a strategic location for managing the shutdown and maintenance of the power plant's water system. This crucial feature ensures that essential maintenance tasks can be carried out without disrupting the site's operations. Additionally, the pressure gallery, situated at the southern end of the cabin, serves as a vital interface for controlling and regulating water flow within the site. Preparations for the arrival of the tunnel boring machine are already underway, with a designated niche carved out to accommodate its entrance into the construction zone. This meticulous planning underscores the complexity of coordinating the various elements of the construction project.
On the opposite side of the cavern, construction is underway on the headwater gallery, a vital component of the project's infrastructure. This gallery, stretching an impressive 140 meters to Lago Triton, serves as a conduit for conveying concrete to its final destination. The delivery of fresh concrete from the slide chamber, accompanied by wisps of steam rising in the cold mountain air, underscores the dynamic nature of the construction process. As the headwater gallery nears completion, attention turns to the final segment, which can only be constructed during the winter months when the lake's inflow diminishes. This seasonal constraint highlights the need for precise timing and coordination to ensure the successful completion of each phase of the project. Simultaneously, work is underway on another gallery dedicated to draining the construction site and facilitating future maintenance operations. These auxiliary structures play a crucial role in supporting the main construction efforts, ensuring the smooth operation of the site. Amidst these activities, the tunnel boring machine continues its slow but steady progress through the rock. Over the course of four months, it has traversed an impressive distance horizontally and vertically, a testament to the ingenuity and perseverance of the project team. Access to the tunnel boring machine is facilitated by a tunnel railway connecting it to the launch cavern. This vital link allows for the seamless transportation of personnel and equipment to end from the construction site, ensuring the smooth operation of the project. Within the access shaft, a carefully orchestrated flow of alpine water carries excavated material away from the construction site, mitigating the risk of falling rocks and ensuring the safety of workers and equipment. Meanwhile, a network of pipes provides essential utilities such as water, compressed air, and electricity, essential for the smooth operation of the construction site. Journeying to the tunnel boring machine is not without its challenges, with the trip taking up to 20 minutes. However, this provides workers with a brief respite, allowing them to relax and discuss the day's tasks before reaching their destination. Upon reaching the tunnel boring machine, Workers are greeted by the impressive sight of the massive drillhead, slowly carving its way through the rock. Despite the cramped conditions, every inch of space is meticulously utilized, with essential utilities suspended beneath the machine and support structures overhead. Outside the mountain, Work is underway on a new power plant control center, designed to withstand the extreme pressures of its environment. This state-of-the-art facility will play a crucial role in managing the site's power generation operations, ensuring a steady supply of electricity for the duration of the project. However, progress within the mountain is not without its challenges, as the tunnel boring machine grinds to a halt 300 meters below the surface. 
The cause of the stoppage is identified as a material imbalance, prompting extensive drilling and reinforcement efforts to stabilize the surrounding rock and allow the project to proceed. Geological assessments reveal the presence of fault gouge formations, necessitating strategic reinforcement measures to prevent further rock slides. Injecting cement into boreholes stabilizes the surrounding rock, allowing the tunnel boring machine to resume its operations cautiously. In the vulnerable zone directly behind the drill head, steel segment rings are installed to reinforce the tunnel vault, ensuring the safety of workers and machinery alike. Despite the setbacks, progress continues, with each obstacle overcome bringing the project one step closer to completion. The undertaking of installing over 85 meters of liner plates and more than 100 tons of steel across six fault zones, accompanied by another 100 tons of concrete, was a monumental achievement in the realm of tunnel construction. Each step of this process required meticulous planning and execution, as the team navigated through challenging geological formations. Within the gripper area, where the TBM operates, the liner plates underwent both welding and bolting to ensure maximum stability. This extra reinforcement was necessary to withstand the immense pressure exerted by the surrounding rock formations. Despite the significant effort invested in these operations, the progress made by the TBM was incremental, with each driving operation advancing only by 25 centimeters. Maintaining precise alignment of the gripper shield and fallback prevention device was imperative to prevent potential damage to the TBM. Any deviation from the drilling axis could result in the machine becoming wedged or jammed within the shaft, subjecting it to severe compressive forces. The complexity of tunneling through a mountain became apparent as the team encountered various geological challenges along the way. Operational errors were not an option, as they could lead to dire consequences. Therefore, Controlling the TBM required not only technical expertise but also a deep understanding of the terrain and intuition honed through years of experience. Despite the challenges, the team's expertise and innovative measures, such as using adjustable wedges to navigate through fault zones, enabled them to make remarkable progress. The successful traversal of the massive Ford zone within a month was a testament to their dedication and ingenuity. However, the journey was far from over as the TBM encountered solid rock and reached the inflection point, where precise alignment was paramount. The meticulous process of changing cutters, each weighing a substantial 80 kilograms, became routine as the team continued their relentless pursuit of progress. Yet, even with careful planning, unforeseen obstacles arose, such as a sudden cave-in. In response, the team embarked on a daring experiment involving the injection of shotcrete to stabilize the fault zone. Despite initial challenges, the experiment proved successful, saving valuable time and resources. As the TBM neared the surface, marking the culmination of their year-long journey through the mountain, the team celebrated their breakthrough with gratitude towards the experienced crew whose dedication and expertise were instrumental in the project's success. Their perseverance and commitment had ensured the completion of a monumental engineering feat. With the tunneling project nearing its end, attention turned to completing the final section of the headwater gallery, signaling the end of the tunneling crew's journey. The construction of the RIT on pump storage plant stood as a testament to the collaborative efforts of the Marty Group showcasing their ability to overcome complex challenges with creativity and resilience.
The HDPE pipe is designed with a convenient bell and spigot connection, incorporating a rubber external gasket on the spigot end. Proper assembly is crucial to maintaining the high performance level the pipe is engineered to deliver. To initiate assembly, the pipe should be carefully lowered into the trench, either manually or using a nylon sling for larger diameters. Workers should be capable of handling pipes up to 18 inches on their own, while pipes of 24 inches and 30 inches can be lifted with a single nylon strap. Pipes larger than 36 inches require two nylon straps spaced 10 feet apart for additional stability. Once the pipe is positioned in the trench, the bell of the receiving pipe must be cleaned to eliminate any foreign matter. Similarly, the spigot end of the connecting pipe should be cleaned, and the protective wrap covering the gasket should be removed. A suitable gasket lubricant should then be applied to both the bell of the receiving pipe and the gasket on the spigot end of the adjoining pipe to ensure proper performance and maintain warranty. It is crucial to always use an approved lubricant and prevent lubricated sections from coming into contact with dirt or other foreign materials to avoid compromising joint integrity. With the pipe lubricated and aligned, it is ready to be assembled using the backhoe and sling method. A nylon sling should be wrapped around the center of the pipe and attached to the backhoe bucket. The spigot should then be carefully pulled squarely into the bell of the receiving pipe, maintaining a low insertion angle of less than 1.5 degrees to avoid misalignment. Alternatively, other installation methods involve pushing the bell onto the pipe being inserted. For these methods, an installation stub is necessary to prevent damage to the bell and provide a solid point for applying pressure during assembly. Installation stubs can be obtained from distributors or easily fabricated on site. To create an installation stub, a section of pipe with the same diameter is cut to five corrugations long, and then cut in the center of the valley between corrugations. Cross cuts are made to remove a thin strip of pipe material to allow the stub to compress and fit inside the bell of the pipe being inserted. The full corrugation end of the stub should always be inserted into the bell. After aligning the pipes and placing the installation stub, assembly can proceed. For smaller diameter pipes, a pry bar against a board can be used to push the spigot into the receiving valve. For larger diameters, the backhoe bucket should be carefully positioned against the board to push the spigot into the receiving valve. Throughout assembly, joints should be inspected for possible improper alignment, foreign material infiltration, or rolled gasket failure. Any of these conditions must be corrected to maintain joint integrity. In cases where a pipe needs to be shortened on site, the process is straightforward. After cutting the pipe to the desired length, any reduced diameter balance pig or ends may need to be removed to ensure proper joining with a replacement coupler on a fitting. The pipe should be cut in the center of the valley between corrugations, and all burrs should be removed from the cut edge. To join a replacement coupler or fitting to the shortened pipe, the gasket should be installed correctly and the bell of the replacement coupler or fitting should align with a homing mark on the pipe. After installing and lubricating the gasket, the joint should be inspected for proper alignment and any signs of foreign matter infiltration or rolled gasket failure. Clearing away bedding and backfill around and under the joint area is essential when joining a fitting or replacement coupler to pipe in the trench to prevent debris from interfering with the assembly process.